up next on KSL Outdoors. Whoa! Good fish. The fantastic fall fishing at the Berry is on. Plus, oh, that's a good fish. We'll yeah. introduce you to the high country fly fishers. Yeah, They'll share their secrets and we'll tell you about their conservation efforts. I'm Adam Eagle, and KSL Outdoors starts right now. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Hey, welcome to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle along with Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech and Mickey, where have you brought us this week? <laughs> We're on strawberry. Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of river fishing. We got some guys with us that are studs on the lake and they're going to show me how. Yeah, who are they? So Park City, uh, high country fly fishers. Okay. Uh, along with just a few friends have shown up. Yeah, TU chapter, they do a lot of good work here in the West and uh, man, I'm excited to fish with them. Yeah, all the work they do, today's their hardest job. They're gonna show me how to catch a lot of fish and make me look good. <laughs> Gotta pump up Mickey's tube. Don't want Mickey to sink. Dave, you gotta help me out. Now, so the first thing I wanna do is show this rig, and it's a little bit different looking. You got a fly, it's clear up here, and one down here, they're like five feet apart. When the flies are too close together, sometimes the fish can't make up their mind which one to eat. Now, what line are you using today? Uh, so I've got an intermediate and a type four for this time of year. Perfect, cast strip, troll, whatever. Whatever works. So right. I'll have, I'll fish both rods and I'll have one of them just trolling, and then I'll have one in my hand that I'll be fishing. I generally troll my lighter line, and, uh, but half the time the rod that I'm not touching catches the most fish, so. So, color on flies, I mean, it looks like you got four different colors. Right, so, because we're just starting today, I mean, I've got guys out there doing intel for us, but um, I go with four different colors to start, and we figure out what's working. All right, should we do it? Let's go fish. Let's go. Your first job is finding the fish. The high country fly fishers have already found them, so we're gonna head straight out and start catching fish. Whoa, good fish. Just like you said, toss fast. That's good fish. Toss Patterson is fishing with us, and he figured out that a fast retrieve is working well. Toss is on, double up. Nice toss. Dave's got one now too. Triples. The bite is on. Looks like a cutty, isn't it? Yep. Not too bad, too big. Very soft take. Was it? Oh yeah. I caught him on a type four. On a black and red polar bunny. Oh. Yep, there he goes. That one I was just jigging. Okay. So I had my line out and just giving it a little a little jig and and he hit, it was kind of a soft hit. Halfway through the day we all made changes. The troller started doing best with a fast sinking type four line, and the casters were doing best with a slow sinking intermediate line. What'd you get him on again, Jay? Black and purple Matuka on my intermediate line, which okay. is a kind of a, not quite a surface floating line, just a slow sinking line. How far down do you think you're getting? Yeah, probably three or four feet. Okay, you know? not very deep. Not very deep. It, oftentimes you'll actually see the strike on the surface. Knowing how deep the fish are and using the right line to keep your fly at that depth is critical. Oh, I got a double. You got a double? <laughs> nice! All right, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish, yeah, it's pretty. Oh, we had a big follower with him. Nice. Can he double up? <laughs> Is he still there? I don't know, let's see. <laughs> yep, nice. Busy like a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. <laughs> right? Today, the fly pattern didn't seem to matter as much as the location. We're catching fish yeah. on streamers, buggers, and leeches in red, white, tan, black, and purple. 
but the location was really important. Finding clearer water is key. We're finding the clearer water in 25 to 40 feet. What do you think? 20? 20, 20, 20. A little better, maybe. I think oh. it's about 27, don't yeah, yeah, 27. Cool. Nice fish. All right, Mickey, try to outdo that. Coming up next, I got a double. You really? I do. I take Dave's challenge, and Adam tells you more about the conservation work that High Country Fly Fishers has done. That just ahead, but first, here's Adam with tonight's climate quiz question. High Country Fly Fishers is one of seven Trout Unlimited chapters here in Utah. Trout Unlimited is now 300,000 members and supporters strong with over 400 chapters nationwide. TU has built upon its reputation as an organization of conservation-minded anglers who rely upon sound scientific principles to promote quality trout and salmon fisheries. Our climate quiz question is, in what state and in what year was Trout Unlimited founded? Now once you know the state and year, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer, we'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner, set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, we'll be right back to Strawberry. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith & Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. I got a double. Do you really? I do. I got two fish on. <laughs> I don't know how to net the second one. <laughs> Welcome back to KSL Outdoors and some fall fishing here at Strawberry Reservoir. They're too far apart. <laughs> You have to headline him in. Got him. Nice. <laughs> We're fishing with High Country Fly Fishers, a nonprofit Trout Unlimited chapter based out of Summit and Wasatch counties. One of our members, Mike Lee, is the lead for Project Healing Waters. So we take the veterans fishing, we build rods, tie flies, um, we do conservation. We planted all the willow trees um, on the Strawberry River going out from the visitor center. We um, do casting for recovery, which is the breast cancer survivors. We do uh, wounded warriors. We um, built the walkovers on the Weber River. We have about 160 members. We have uh, meetings uh, once a month um, in Park City, and we bring in you know speakers from all over the country, and um, they give us trips to raffle off, which is you know how we raise one of the ways we raise money. The other is um, we're part of the Wasatch Expo. Toss has got a real good fish. It looks like well, we raise money and then we spend the money on conservation. You know we clean up this lake and rivers and. Uh, hope to get involved with strawberry pinnacles when the time time comes. Uh, but you know, so we do a lot of service. Uh, type four, tan and red matuka. But mostly, we come here and lie about all the fish we catch, which is really our job. It's starting to turn on. It gets me out on the water more. It gets me uh, to go to air places that I haven't seen before. We also have some exceptional fly fishermen in the group that, um, so I can learn a lot about the sport. And uh, it's been a Great way for me to, you know, enter into the community and get involved with conservation projects. Just fantastic. Well, it's on a uh, John Schultz copper side. We got to mention John Schultz if we're out here. High Country Fly Fishers has two members inducted into the Utah Fly Fishing Hall of Fame, an honor given to those who have enhanced the fishing resources and promoted youth fishing and education programs here in Utah. Nice cutting. Yeah, he's beautiful. Bob Dibley received the honor in 2016. All right, guys, we got some eggs here. We're going to pass them around. Yeah, I think one of my biggest things that really helped me out was that trout in the classroom. Yeah, I started with four schools and we're up to 47 now. <clears throat> we put a 55 gallon aquarium in the uh, schools. Yeah. And in January, we take rainbow trout eggs in and they get to watch them hatch and go through the uh, kind of life cycle of hatching, things like that. The kids love it. I mean, they just they just get a big kick out of it. Yeah. And then in uh, May, we take them out on the ponds and let them turn the fish loose. But I mean, you're spawning new fishermen, new anglers. Oh yeah. That. Well, that that's the whole idea. It teaches them a, a good idea of the watersheds and to, uh, and the life cycle of the of the fish. Yeah. So it's I mean it's great. It's just really a nice you know a, a nice program. Yeah. 
What do you like about being a part of a, a group like High Country? Uh, it, it's, I, think, I probably shouldn't say that, but it's the best chapter in the state. Oh, ho, got him. I, I just looked down and I thought, wow, there's a big fish right behind me. And then I looked for my white fly and it was gone. That's a good fish. Yeah, this is a nice day. It's, um, you know, a couple months, this will be gone. But uh, we'll fish up here till the water's about 34 degrees. And then we cry uncle. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, then it's time to do something else. But um, yeah, it's, it's nice and uh, the fall's always nice up here. And um, yeah, it slowed down a little bit, but you know, I think everybody's caught a dozen fish or so. Well, the fishing's been pretty good. I've even managed to snag a couple. Mickey's over here trying a uh, on the water technique, a little testing, if you will. He's managed a couple. Let's go check him out for this week's Fish Tech Fish Report. Man, today on Strawberry, it has been so good. And a lot of the fish are within three or four feet of the surface. So I'm gonna bobber fish. Hi, I'm Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's Fishing Report. Most of the time they hit this bobber when it's just sitting still, but sometimes a little strip, bring it in really slow can be the way to do it. So indicator fishing, most people know about the coronamid type fishing, but there's another type of lure that you can use. It's called a balanced leech. Now this is tied with a bead that extends out in front of the hook. And it's actually tied on a jig hook. The advantage of an indicator is it can keep your fly at one steady depth. We're finding so many fish today in the three to five foot range that I'm gonna have this set at about four feet. The jig that's underneath of it is balanced and it sits horizontal. Now when you're casting a rig like this, throw that open loop. You've got that bobber out there and you've got a weighted fly underneath of it. And you wanna throw it in more of an open loop as opposed to the nice tight dry fly cast. Watch and make sure that you see two splashes, the splash from the indicator and the splash from your fly. That way you know that you didn't tangle while you were casting. Balanced flies come in a lot of different colors. Today, for me, the black one's been working best, but for a couple other guys, this red one's been working. And you can even tie a mop fly into a balanced leech and it'll work well. Hey, for these bobber tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech, we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Hey, welcome back to Strawberry. Well, Mick, uh, I'll admit, those fly guys, they could catch a lot of fish. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. There was a lot of fish on the flies. That's not the only thing that you can use up here. It's true, there's a lot of anglers on shore today and out in boats, and everybody wanted to know what we're using, and they didn't have a lot of that stuff, but there's so many other things that work. Yeah, there's a couple guys that trolled by using Rapalas, and you caught you know, plenty of fish on the Lucky Craft, the Pointer yeah. Minnow, that's always good. That's a mainstay up here. Yeah, tube jigs. God, tubes always work. Sure, I like kind of this off color. This is my favorite tube jig up here. Everybody always says to go with the, you know, a brown or a green or a white. Oh, I found one that finally goes <laughs> both. both. And it seems to work. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and yeah. just uh, throw it out with a night crawler, chunk yeah. of night crawler. Yeah, and the key to that is having a stripper rod and setting the hook hard. Those cutthroats just bury their teeth in that plastic. You gotta pull that plastic through their teeth to get the hook set. And the couple we ran into, he caught like a 22 inch, uh, fish and he was just using a, a, a bobber. What'd you get him on? A worm. Uh, just a night crawler, huh? Yeah, that's Not big enough though for the wife so she can can them. <laughs> I, know I know it. it. <laughs> She's a little discouraged. We can't find a rainbow this morning. Yeah, that's a cool thing right now. The fish weren't down very deep. They're only three or four feet deep. Mm -hmm. Bobber with a night crawler on will kill them this time of year. Yeah. Anything <laughs> else that you would throw? I mean, obviously well, guys that are trolling, they can still catch them. You know, trolling a, a, a flasher and a needle fish or a squid this time of year. Um, right. There's so many other th I mean, things you can use up here. Yeah, I think the biggest key for us today was getting out of that really soupy stuff, being out on the edge, and that seemed to be like 25 feet to 40 feet of water. You know, one of the best lures I've ever used up here, and it may have been time, may have been the guys I was fishing with, but James Bradshaw, Maniac uh, Custom Lures, this Maniac Middle and the Changeable Craw, we slammed them here in November <laughs> about three years ago, so. And I've done really well with that through the ice, so. Yeah. Good lure. Yeah, there's some great stuff. A lot of fun up here for anybody. A lot of it was just being in the right place. Right, and that, that's the thing, you know, a boat really helps this time of year. The shore fishers might have a tough time right now, but as soon as that moss dies off along the shoreline, I think they'll do really well. Yeah. Coats. Or pick a real steep shoreline. Oh, there's, yeah. you can you know, reach a little bit deeper water. 
We'll be back to the Barry in a moment, but first, let's check out this week's Utah Field Guide as we get you ready for the upcoming pheasant hunt. Utah's general season pheasant hunt opens next Saturday, November 3rd, and runs through December 2nd with a daily limit of two roosters. Get them! You know, most of Utah's pheasant hunting happens on private land, but that doesn't mean you should stay at home. There are still plenty of places that are available to hunt. It just takes a little legwork and homework on your part. The DWR manages several wildlife management areas and waterfowl management areas across Utah. All of these areas are open to the public and many have pheasants on them. Walk-in access areas are another place to consider. Walk-in access areas are private property that's open to the public hunter through agreements the landowners have made with the DWR. Many of the walk-in access properties have pheasants on them. For information on both of these opportunities, check out the DWR's website at wildlife.utah.gov. In addition to the wildlife management areas and walk-in access areas, another option is getting written permission from a private landowner to hunt their property. Now is the time to get permission, not the morning of the hunt, and be polite and understanding if a landowner doesn't give you access. If you get access, remember to respect the landowner's property by leaving it better than you found it. For more information on other upland game hunts found here in Utah, check out our website at ksltv.com. You know, we're here the day before the deer hunt, late October, and the weather is actually really, really nice. I'm out here in just a, in just a shirt. If you watch that forecast pretty closely, you can uh, usually find a pretty good day up here, even into November. Hey, speaking of the weather, let's check that recreation forecast now by turning it over to Kevin in the weather department. Hey, welcome back to Strawberry Reservoir. You know, we gotta feed the guys if they're gonna come out here and devote a morning to catch and fish for us. And so we brought our Camp Chef Pro 60 and the new Camp Chef Pizza Oven. That's, well, I guess it's not brand new. It's been around for a few years. If you haven't used it, check it out. They're pretty slick. Hey, and also if you're looking for some ideas to get you and yours into the outdoors, check our outdoors calendar page right there on our website at ksltv.com. Boy, one thing about these cuts, they are sure pretty this time of year, aren't they? Boy, they really are. Look at the orange on the... Yeah, the fins or markings, just pretty fish. Yeah, a lot of good times up here. And don't forget when, oh, there he goes. When you bring your kids, uh, he's gone. <laughs> and they happen to catch a fish like Mix. <laughs> Take a few pictures, uh, submit them to our Snapshot contest. You might win our new prize from Camp Chef. Here's all the details in this week's Snapshot of the Week. We kick it off back at the Barry. Mark was fishing on the Soldier Creek side of the Barry the same day as us and landed this giant 24 inch, six pound cutthroat. Mark says the action was fast. He was mostly catching smaller fish until this monster showed up. When Seth's grandpa, Bryant Davis, hooked this beast of a Mac at Bear Lake, Seth was right there to help him out. These two fishermen are making memories to last a lifetime. Josh was up at Bear Lake as well in search of his first ever lake trout and left without catching a Mac. But he did catch this nine pound cutthroat, his personal best. Roger shows off this beautiful 213 pound bluefin he caught after an hour long battle. He and some buddies were fishing off San Clemente Island with vagabond sport fishing. Five days later, Roger had a heart attack and had two stints placed. He says he's doing very well and the fish was worth every second. Brian was Euro nymphing on a cold morning on the Logan River with his brother when he latched into the biggest fish he's ever had on a fly rod. Brian says it took 35 minutes to land the fish and it was definitely worth the cold fingers. And finally our winner tonight went in search of elk and came away with salmon. Kyle and his dad Kent were up above Smith and Morehouse on the last few days of the general rifle elk hunt. They didn't find any elk so on the way out Kyle grabbed his fly rod and a self-tied black woolly bugger and went out to catch some fish. And he did, just not the species he was expecting. Kyle was shocked to see these landlocked salmon at almost 8,000 feet with their spawning colors during the last weeks of October. Well, those are some cool colors there, Kyle, and now our cool prize to go along with it as you just hauled in our snapshot of the week. Remember to submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a Camp Chef Versatop Grill and Griddle. Small in size, large in cooking capacity, perfect for those on the go. 
Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. From the back country to your back patio, Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Nice! Hey, if people want to get involved with, uh, with your high country, high country fly fishers, sure, how do they, how um, they get involved? So the website is hcff.net. Okay. And uh, they can go on there, they can sign up. Uh, we have a calendar list of all the events that we do all through the year, uh, when the meetings are, and um, they can come get involved and uh, we'll get them busy planting trees and cleaning up rivers and stuff. Don't have to be in the Hall of Fame, I guess, to be a part of it, right? Uh, no, but, but if, if you join our club, you're, you're bound to be in the Hall of Fame. I got a double. Do you really? I do. What do you think as the season goes on and the water gets colder? I would think it gets only better. But. It's going to get a lot better. when Once that pea soup moss dies off, then it's killer. Yeah. I can see your little colder. a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, good deal. We'll get out to strawberry. You still have plenty of time till the, uh, till the snow flies and then just waiting for ice. I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.